It's time for class. Class is in session. Roll call. Bueller. I'm going to be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? Late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet to go to the bathroom. Nothing. There is no bathroom. Hello and welcome to another episode of Middle Class Film Class. I'm your host for today, Joseph. I'm Peter. And I'm Tyler. And this week, the Wheel of Destiny landed on my pick, City of God. Nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Adapted Screenplay. Wheel de Janeiro. The Beach. The Nightlife. The Romance. But 15 miles from paradise is a place called the City of God. Hey, I know her. A place where one man must infiltrate a war. Oh my God. Between two crime lords to tell a story the world needs to know. Oh, yeah. City of God. Yes. Is that it? That's it. All right. City of God, a uh, Brazilian movie directed by two people, Fernando Marai, Morales, mm-hmm. and Katia Lund, or Lund. And this is about the city of God, quite literally, the city of God. The tender trio robs motels and gas trunks. Younger kids watch and learn well. The Lil Z has proper has prospered very well and owns the city. He causes violence and fear as he wipes out rival gangs without mercy. His best friend Benny is the only one to keep him on the good side of sanity. Rocket, our main character, has watched these two gain power for years, and he wants no part of it. He keeps getting swept up in the madness. All he wants to do is take pictures. And uh, this is a movie that kind of spans decades starting when these main characters are children, quite literally children, being exposed and living in this violent environment where law is very loosely enforced and sometimes the police are just are complacent or they're bought off by these drug dealers mm-hmm. who run these these neighborhoods. And Lil Z being the main, I guess, adversary in, adversary in this story and Rocket... Just being there, not wanting to be a part of it, and like I said, just wanting to be a photographer a, and take pictures. And this is based on true events or the true environment of this time and of this city yeah. uh, and this part of Brazil. This movie is very intense, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> it's very gritty in its aesthetic, the way it's shot and the way it's edited. It's very frenetic. Uh, very restless. Yeah. And um, this is my first time watching it. And Pete, I don't think, I think this you've seen this before. Yeah, I saw it a long time ago. And Tyler, have you seen this before? I have not. This uh, would be my first viewing. Yes. Um, my first viewing. And this is actually on a poster that Pete gave me a few years ago that is like a top 100 movies or whatever that you scratch off oh, as yeah, you well, watch them. Scr- oh, scratch and okay. sniff posters. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I sniff it anyway. Yeah. Know, it's to. And uh, and so this one is on there. So this is definitely like a movie that is probably in the like a thousand movies to watch before you die. And it's yeah, for sure. uh, one of the top foreign language films and probably one of the more popular really? Br- Brazilian movies specifically. But, but yeah, let's get into our initial thoughts on City of God, Pete. So this the first time I saw this, I want to say it was recommended to me from one of the guys from the film vault, either Brian or Anderson, probably Anderson. And it was sold as a a very bleak and interesting look into uh, Brazilian slums. And I remember liking it back then, but I was pretty, pretty young in my movie enjoying career and thinking of things a little bit less um, critically. And Mm -hmm. with this rewatching, it's a really, it's a fucking fantastic movie. And it feels it feels almost like you're watching a documentary. Did you did either of you guys watch Io Capitano, the movie that we we just got a screener for it not too long, just like yesterday, thanks to the, oh. the cinematics crew. Thanks, shout out to Greg Sersavasti for that. Hooked us up with a PR group for that. 
But I watched it. I didn't talk about it on the show because I wanted to wait until at least one of you guys had seen it so we can talk together about it. But it felt in the same same way as that movie where you've, you're almost like it's a day in the life or a year in the life or in this case decades in the life of these people, that these, these poor souls that are – their lot in life was being born to the city of God and – all the trials and tribulations that make up the good times, the bad, the, the humanistic moments of just trying to get a girlfriend or fighting with your best friend about the girl that you thought you liked and maybe she thought she liked you. And then it's all peppered in with this insane, unbelievable violence that comes at every corner. It just feels so damn real. The grittiness and that like frenetic, energetic style editing that you're talking about, Joseph, is really lends itself to I think like the chaos that is like always upon you when you're living in the city of God. So I found out a lot more about this, having rewatched it and looked a little bit more into the production of it and where they found these kids to be in the movie from that I didn't realize the first time. And I just found an even more appreciation on a second watch. This is a really fantastic movie and it's not one that you can really, I think recommend to everybody casual sort of movie watcher might think, find this a little bit hard to watch because there's some intense moments there. But I, I think it's worth watching even if you're not a cinephile per se. If you're just a, a movie enjoyer and you want to see something that's outside of your wheelhouse, so maybe if you haven't been exposed to a lot of foreign films, this would be a perfect one to show somebody to uh, stretch their range of what they're watching, if that makes any sense. So yeah, on the second watch, really fantastic. Really fantastic. Cool. Tyler. What is what did you think? So when I was watching this movie throughout the whole movie, it I wasn't enjoying it as much. I was struggling to get past the bombastic sort of like craziness of the whole plot. Then it really comes around when I realize that this is a photojournalist sort of journey this isn't about of course it's about the city of god and it's all about the the trials and tribulations that these poor people have to go through with the gangs and the sociopathic maniacs that are running rampant just gunning down people with no impunity and and so when I got to the, I think it was, it, it had to been like the last like 30 minutes of the movie when I realized, oh, because who it's Rocket. His name is Rocket. Rocket. Yeah, the journal, the photo photographer. Yeah. So the, so what I came, when I came out of this movie, it made me realize this was a whole journey of a photojournalist witnessing this whole situation that's been unfolding <laughs> with the gangs, the killings, and just the abject poverty that everyone has to deal with. Mm -hmm. And at first, like when I was watching it, I didn't quite, it didn't quite catch me. But then once, once they wrapped it up, it really made me realize, holy, holy goddamn, <laughs> this person went through a lot to capture the horrors of living in the slum that is the city of God. I do this movie. I think I, I agree with you, Pete. This isn't a movie that I would recommend to anyone, really, as far as if you're just a casual movie watcher. But I think it's great. Like I, I think it's a really great movie, and it's just because based on the ending. Hmm. So the ending solidified it for you? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, this was a very tense movie from the beginning. From the very start of the movie, it just is already tense. It felt like, because it felt like anyone would just do anything on a whim. Like you couldn't predict what anybody else was gonna do. It felt like Lord of the Flies mixed with Goodfellas, where oh, that's a really good description. <laughs> I like that. Where if you just said something in the wrong tone or were just in the wrong place at the wrong time, you would get killed or yeah. shot at or yeah, shot just... at. And it felt pretty like it felt pretty real sometimes, like a little like too real because yeah, really how did they shoot those kids in the foot? Like it, it felt <laughs> like they did because 
I don't know how you get these non-actor real kids. <laughs> Wait, are you to, saying to, they actually shot them? <laughs> to cry like that on camera. Like, it, it just seems like, how do you how do you tell a kid to do that? I don't, I don't yeah. know if that was their method. Like, we need you to cry because just pretend like you got shot in the foot and it hurts real bad and you're scared. Maybe they're just really great actors. I, I guess so. The, the, the most, the, one of the best undiscovered non-actor kids i have in, thoughts uh, i'll save it for your initial thoughts to be over though it it was a little bit reminiscent of come and see in the in a sense that it felt like everybody was in actual danger and oh. i also got notes of amoros peros in how the story is told from different point of views which was a really great device for this movie and they play with that device and they also do an editing trick where it's like they show you one part of that story and then it goes back and then it meets up again with at that point in the story, like the apartment scene where they deal where they deal drugs out of, and the knocking on the door of the kid coming in and them essentially raiding, raiding that apartment. Yeah, it's a really effective movie in showing how brutal and unrelenting that life is and can be. And I don't really know how true to life it is, whether it's they're exaggerating it or if it's like an understatement of how, what it's actually like. there's some exaggeration but i think it they capture the nature of it but uh, regardless if it's an actual if, if it's an accurate reflection of reality it is a very it's incredibly well shot acted and it's definitely well edited and uh, yeah so like on all fronts it's pretty incredible and it, i think it just has a style like the, that that gritty it has like this gritty sweaty style to it yeah that yeah. is like a uh that movie 13 and also man on fire or deja vu not deja vu man on fire it just has like smoke and aces that type of look to it you know what i mean yeah, yeah. feels Almost very like, humid like a high shutter yeah very contrasty and hot yeah it just it, just, it looks very sweaty <laughs> and it's a style that like can work for people but it, it's also it can be like a deterrent for other that. people yeah i can see that yeah but overall yeah i enjoyed it it's not something I could easily come back to, but but it is really good. Give it some time because I'm glad I, I revisited it, and I think it's it ages really well. Yeah, it's yeah. Se it seems like a movie because it takes place in the 60s and 70s, timeless in that. Oh, I thought it was the aspect. 80s. Oh no, it, it happens in the 60s in the beginning, and yeah. then it flash goes up. It goes to, into the 80s. Yeah, because yeah. they got yeah they're wearing bell bottoms at some point, and then into the 80s culture. Yeah, yeah. That was that was a weird that was a weird transition because it happens so fast. Because you're introduced in the beginning of the movie to the slums of the city of God, which are very rural, and then once you get probably about uh, I don't know, like about an hour and thirty into the movie, it's like <laughs> a the city. Movie, right before the movie's over, it turns into a city. <laughs> is it right before the movie? No, you said it's an hour and 30 minutes into the movie. It becomes a city. Yeah. It's like after the, it's like there's like a 15 minute intro where they're in the they're they're kids and then it goes into the rest of the movie. Oh, then maybe I misremembered. When Lil huh? Lil Dice turns into Lil Z. Yeah. <laughs> the intro of the movie is what comes back later. Yeah. And it's, it's like a Tarantino <laughs> thing, you know. Start at the end. Yeah, I totally forgot um, that uh where it goes. And I, and I think to Tyler's point the wraparound of is you're introduced to him with a camera. Rocket is a camera. He has a camera and he's a yeah, just an aspiring photographer. And it really you you don't know where his journey is going. He's just meandering through life and just getting by and trying to stay out of trouble and trying to stay off the radar. Trying to get laid. Yeah, trying to get laid. And, which, and uh, done and done. He has to meet. Yeah, he used to meet that journalist to get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like she took advantage of him a little bit. Yeah, that was that was creepy, but yeah. Hey, kid, let me buy some of your let me buy some of your pictures. By the way, bring that dick over here. <laughs> Hop in, baby. <laughs> no, but, you didn't have a place to live. You didn't have a place to live, so he was this like, is like, "Hey, I'm not charging you rent, but I am charging you something else." <laughs> yeah, there there is a tax. Um, but yeah, I liked that because I mean, for one, number one, it does it brings it all around that he's finally able to use his passion, his photography passion, for good. But number two, it's like, what else are you going to do? He's already living there. It's not like he's an outsider infiltrating the city of God to get to get the goods on it. Yeah, he's a local. He's a local. He's on boots on the ground. He's a, he's an original. 
And mm-hmm. I think that sort of unprecedented exposure into that sort of life is as impressive. Was he the one who is the stand in for the author of the book, Paulo Linz? What do you mean? Because Paulo Linz, he wrote the book and he's about right. his own life. He grew up in the city of God in real life. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. I was looking through I some look into of, that. I was looking through some of the trivia and it says, yeah, Buscape, who is it's Rocket, was based on a composite of Paulo Linz, the author. And a childhood friend of his who he dreamed of being a photographer. So he, I guess he wasn't, he dreamed, I, I'm assuming since he wrote the book, his dream was to be an author. One of my favorite lines in this movie was, he said, it was right at the end. He said, my name is not Rocket. It's, I can't, the name that is. <laughs> favorite line. Love that line. <laughs> <laughs> He said, I just remember he said, I just remember he said, my name's not Rocket anymore, by the way. It's actually Jose. Yeah, or something <laughs> to that effect. Why is that your favorite line? I don't know. It's just more, it's more saying that he has ejected himself from this life. He's, shed, he's shedding a, the persona that he's had to g- grapple onto living in such yeah. a squalor. Yeah, exactly. And so I really like that ending line that he says uh, Mm. about himself. There's a couple of discrepancies from the Portuguese language release and the English language release. Mm. Uh, Discrepancies? Yeah, a couple of things. One of the big ones is on the cover, they edited it out, all the kids or the young men holding guns on the cover. They're still Mm. pointing Uh guns, but they're like imaginary guns, like finger guns are pointing. Yeah. At the camera, so they took that out. But also, Knockout Ned, the guy who is just basically thrown into the mix. Yeah. And unfortunately... That dude was a badass. Yeah, and uh, I thought they called him Knockout Ned because he knew how to fight, but it's because he was attractive. Knockout, like he's a knockout. Yeah, I know, that's what I thought. That's the guy that make him strip, don't they? Isn't Um, that him? Yeah, uh, I think so, yeah. I think at some point, yeah. He's the one... Yeah, yeah, he had to strip in front... He had to strip nude... In front of a mob but, of people. Yeah, and the, he had to at, dance. The, at, at a Benny's going away. No, no, that wasn't Knockout Ned. That was somebody that else. Wasn't him. Oh, that wasn't Knockout no, Ned? No, okay. not at the party. He's the he's a really tall guy who ends up fighting against uh, Lil Because Z. he was a bus driver. Yeah, he was the bus driver. And then they, he like talks some, like they, they almost rape his girlfriend. I don't know if they actually do rape her. Um, I think they do. In front of him. Yeah. yeah. And then they are antagonizing terrible, him at his house. Terrible. And they, they show up with a mob to his house and they shoot it up and his uh, dad dies and his brother dies. And then at that point, yeah. he's like, I, what can I do? I, you've taken my life from me. I'm just going to shoot back at these guys. And he joins the rival gang for protection. But in the original Portuguese language, it's not his name is not Knockout Ned. His name is Mane Galina, which is uh, Chicken Manuel. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's Chicken says, Manuel. Yeah, his name is Manuel in real life, and he's actually a, uh, he's based he's a, based off of a, a real person, the actual uh, the actor, and he's his name is Manuel, and he stole chickens, so they named him Chicken Manuel. But it doesn't translate to English because chicken has a connotation of being a coward, so they changed it to Knock Out Ned. The, uh, the actor who plays Knock Out Ned is Sue George, who is in uh, Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. He's the guy who plays guitar. He's speaking the, oh. he's doing the French David Bowie interpretations. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a real samba soul singer and he is very famous in Brazil in real life. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I liked the, I liked, obviously I didn't like the person, <laughs> but that Lil Dice who grows up to be Lil Z, that whole scene at essentially his turning point when he, when they give him a at gun at the hotel or motel at, or whatever at the yeah at the motel where those like Europeans are staying it's and like a, like, yeah. it's like a love hotel it's like a brothel yeah or, or just a sex house I don't know <laughs> like none nobody else none of the older kids they just rob them yeah yeah that's they, all that, that's right? all they wanted to do but then they just wanted to rob them little dice was essentially born a bad person because he just goes in there and just kills them yeah just like, as a young. As a young child, like, yeah. he, this, like he's probably like what, eight ten, years old. Yeah, he's probably seven? nine, ten, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and see, this is where the movie started losing me at first, is because of like his indiscriminate, like killing, just mm-hmm. going in there to kill, knowing that the people who were, I guess, looking after him 
said, mm-hmm. yeah, we're not going to kill anyone. We're just going to... We're just going to take their money. Take. Uh, we're just going to take money. We're just going to take these rich white people money and then we're just going to get out and go. Yeah. And so he goes in and he essentially kills everyone in the freaking motel and not essentially he does <laughs> well, <laughs> he just walks well, i don't know if he i don't know if he killed everyone but he, well, killed, he killed he kills the people who work there and he killed people who are staying there he's obsessed with the but gun he gets it they give him the gun the older kids give him the gun and he's very excited about it and he's supposed to just stay watch stay around like yeah. wa- watching guard yeah and when they hear the gunshots they don't realize it's little dice they just think the cops have showed up so they all bounce and they don't find out till isn't it years later that they find out it's him yeah, yeah I, I, think so. I don't yeah. know if it was years it was definitely in the future though um but what took me out of the movie though is like there's no build up to him being this murderous maniac you don't see the excitement in his eyes every time he's on screen that he's excited to be doing well, bad no, stuff do. with I the do. older kids <laughs> that's the build-up i do but there, there's no like rhyme or reason to it that's and what makes so, it scary he's a true sociopath just like, like just so said at the beginning of, of this review it, the bad things that happen to people seems to it can happen at any moment there's no rhyme or reason to it you you think you're in good with these guys, and then all of a sudden they're gonna shoot you in the head the second you walk through the door for some perceived slight that you don't even know you did. You know, yeah. you know what this movie? It's effective in the way to make you feel bad for him, though, because who Lil you, Dice? Do you remember that? Yeah, Lil, Lil Z? Dice, like or Lil Z or same person. Lil Z, Lil Z when he's older. Yeah, Lil Dice turns he, into Lil when Z when he's when he's older and he's like trying to socialize with the people. You felt bad for him? And no, I'm but I didn't feel bad for him. I'm just saying no, that no, no. I, I did feel bad for him, but only in a certain sense. Like, okay. First off, we have Tyler's sympathizing with the Nazis and a simple life or hidden life. Hidden life. He would join them, actually. Yeah, he also he was against Adrian Brody in the Pianist. He's like, why didn't he just why didn't he just become one of the uh, police officers? Bootlicking uh, to find his degree, and now he's a little ratting z- out his ratting out his own people. Yeah, now he's a little z apologist. <laughs> I never the depth of the bootlicking. It, I, it never ceases to amaze me. I don't know why I'm surprised either. <laughs> Who pays off the cops? Little Z, he pays off the cops. I know. Why didn't they just pay the cops off? <laughs> I think Lil Z had it right. I would get rid of my rivals too if I could. I do. I I do understand what what you're saying, Tyler. Though, because when he when you when he's Lil Z and he's older and you see him trying to socialize, he he can't. Does, he yeah. He's essentially put himself in a position of so much power and intimidation and being this threatening person that has the reputation of like he'll just kill you because he feels like it. Yeah. No one wants to be around him. No one like yeah. wants to be involved with him. Yeah. And, for good reason. Uh, it's almost like, <laughs> yeah. it's almost like at a on a certain level he sees that and knows that, but he doesn't know how to deal with that, and he just decides to shoot people. <laughs> and that's what I really liked about the actor who uh, was playing that character is like he really emoted very well of being someone who is self aware because he's an intelligent person, so he is self-aware of the social implications of his actions that Mm -hmm. he's doing. And I think you can see that there's definitely regret Mm. to, to to, there's regret on what he was trying to achieve. And that is like, he wanted to be the boss of the city. I Mm -hmm. think that's what they say. The boss of the city. And that comes with a cost. And, I think with this movie, it, it it really just portrays the idea of going forward with something that could isolate you from just like a normal life, if that makes sense. So we should pity the bad guy. No, I'm not saying we should pity the bad guy. This guy was killing indiscriminately. It's, so, you have two. There's two sides to it because we're a product of our environment, right? Sure. And Lil Z is a product of his environment, but Rocket also came from that same environment, and he's not a drug dealer or killing people. Yeah, it's not like there is not the ability to not become that type of person. 
Yeah. It's just mm. that do you have it, it yeah, it and do when he's a the, kid, do you when, have the human will. When he's a kid, he's like, I just want to kill people for what no reason for yeah. just because he thinks it's fun. Yeah. And so that's the that's essentially it's like, it's not just saying that people from bad places are bad people or end up being bad people because look at Rocket, he's and Benny and a million yeah. other people. It's the just like complexities of human behavior. It can come from anywhere. Yeah. It is, and I think this movie really, after reflecting on it and just think, just really thinking about it, it really does represent a way of life that that a lot of people probably would never be aware. Not, I shouldn't say aware of, but they would never. Well, shines a spotlight. It? Yeah, it shines a spotlight on a part of the world that we don't know it about. Yeah, I think that's why yeah. the Godfather was such a big thing because people were like, "Wow, this is crazy. It's these mob bosses, and it's done <laughs> in such an interesting way." I dig these guys, and even though they're the bad guy, talking about like the environment and where it was filmed, it was filmed on location oh, in what? in an adjacent neighborhood or city to the city of God because the actual city of God at the time, anyway, was too dangerous to be in for yeah, anybody really? and the even where they filmed the, the uh, rio in rio the favela which is slums essentially yeah yeah the director or one of the directors was quoted as saying is if he knew the dangers of filming the movie where he filmed it he wouldn't have done the movie <laughs> oh no and i'm just like <gasps> when you're on location for a movie like this yeah the your your crew you're the sound guy on that and you're just like holding the boom up hoping you're not getting gonna get mugged or get stabbed in the, stabbed in the back and because you, you're walking around with e- equipment things that are worth like money yeah yeah and uh, yeah it's i can't imagine too. i can't imagine the uh anxiety of filming this movie because it's uh kind of scary yeah it is. Yeah. It's terrifying. The whole thing is terrifying. You're telling a story about, hey, guys, this happened uh, here 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, wait, oh, all the same people are ago? still here. Yeah, they're just older now or dead. It, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Would you ever uh, join a gang? What no. kind of gang? No. no I don't gang. know. Any gang. Like, any, any gang? gang? Like, like a, a, like like a, if you're like a bikey gang? gang? Gucci gang? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If someone. If someone said, uh, uh, like the big uh, yeah, dick gang, say, yeah, it could be a dick gang. I don't know what that means. A big dick, exactly what it could it's be. Like. That Tyler's the uh, president, he's the uh, what's the soldier at arms or whatever, <laughs> the big dick gang, yeah, sergeant at arms. Yeah, he also I, has the P P R O U D. What does that mean? P R U D boy. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Tyler's got it tattooed on across his upper shoulders on his back. What I was. What, what are you hiding under that under that hat? It just says. <laughs> pr- yeah, don't worry proud about it. About it's, that. It's got a Confederate flag on it. No, with this movie, it really. Wait, wait you abandoned it, this premise. You asked us if we'd be in a gang, and then you moved on. Did, would you be in a, Would you be in a gang? That's what I was gonna get into. Say it. I could have. Oh. I could okay. have. You had the opportunity to be in a gang, skinhead. <laughs> you're setting yourself up for this, Tyler. <laughs> your your local chapter <laughs> was it HA? What's, what's it HA? I was in a neighborhood which had gang activity, hmm. and there was an opportunity for myself to join a gang, and. When I was watching this movie, they portray the people who are living in the neighborhood joining like the adjacent gangs mm-hmm. very accurately because it's not it, it it's so easy for that to happen. It's so easy for you give to give it a sec, give what what was your requirement to join? Did you have to kill somebody or step on a baby duck or something like that? Oh no, that like I didn't had to give someone a wedgie. That... <laughs> Let's go egg that house. You can be part of our gang. The egg no. gang. <laughs> or was it like, hang out with us so that we'll protect you against those guys? Was that what it was more like? It was more like uh, steal booze from the store. 
Wait, is it like, like the go, sharks go and the jets? Go into this store and steal booze, and then we'll <laughs> give you a sip. A lot of snapping involved. <laughs> a lot of dance. Snapping and dance dancing. Fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you're a jet, you're a jet. That's what he said. And then yeah. they cut your face. But what I like about this movie is it really portrays like how easily like young kids can. What, what was it? The uh, the runts. The runts. Yep. So it's like the runts. They form their own group, and they were like, kind of uh, just like all over the place. We're gonna be like, our they... own gang. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of it. It's that's real life. That is real life, and that can happen anywhere. It does it. There is no place where you're not safe from yeah. that kind of activity. Mm-hmm. You gang around every corner. I live in the Spe- suburbs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking speaking of the runts, I mentioned in my review, like how do they get those kids to cry like that? And yeah. so to prepare the the one runt that gets shot in the foot for the scene in which he cries when he gets shot, there was an acting coach, Fatima Toledo who worked with him and he had never act, acted before and discovered that his biggest fear was having a toothache. Hmm. So when the time came to shoot the scene, she told him to just remember his toothache and when he was shot in the foot to pretend his tooth, toothache had pain had moved to his foot. Oh, interesting. He had such a deep set fear. He's a small child. An irrational fear of having a toothache it's the fear was so strong that just even the thought of it would send him into tears. That, That's a good that, acting that coach. Per, that perfor- that performance that that little kid made was. What trauma do you experience, huh? What's it? What? I actually have an interesting story about tooth-related trauma. We'll go off on a little <laughs> okay. bit of a tangent for a second. So, when do you think about it? Do you cry? Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Not anymore, he says. Not yeah. anymore. When I was a when I was growing up, it was me and my sister, we brush our teeth side by side. We ate the same things damn near every day. We brush our Use teeth. Use the same floss. At the same time every day. Your teeth side by side? What? Yeah, I don't, live, those. I don't live in a, yeah, we don't live in a, a billion dollar estate like you and your, your kin, Tyler. We yeah, had one right. one sink we had to share, all 12 of us, all cuddled around. We have around. a bathroom for each of our balls. <laughs> all 12 of you. Yeah, huddled around. Yeah, we were all, all. I didn't know you had so many siblings. All and huddled sh- up. In a shared in a, floss in a shoebox, uh, buried <laughs> under a septic tank. That's where our house was, luxury. But no, we had basically what I'm saying is we had the same schedule. We ate the same things, damn near me and my sister. We brushed our teeth the same time. So it's in theory, we had the same genes. We should have roughly the same amount of uh, cavities and things like that, right? When you go to the dentist, she was two years, mm. two and a half years older than me. She had lost a lot of her teeth young, and and she had adult teeth. And uh, this is gonna go somewhere. When we go okay. to the den- when we go to the dentist, I would have cavity after sometimes three, four cavities at a time. We'd get drilled. Oh, jeez. Root canals, teeth pulled, like just root canals. Pretty rough stuff for a, for a young kid. Damn. For a young kid, yeah. And I never in, in retrospect, I only looked back at it and thought it was strange because Jessica never had any of those cavities and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we moved we went from Fairfield as pediatric dentist to Vacaville and we found a new new dentist there. Really didn't have any cavities, like one, once every few years, maybe, with this new dentist. We found out later that dentist was arrested for insurance fraud, our old dentist. <laughs> he was drilling kids' teeth when they were baby teeth, and then the teeth would fall out, and there was, like, no evidence. The adult teeth, they would leave fine. And he was basically <laughs> giving unnecessarily dental procedures to children for years before he was caught. And, and what does I this was, have to do with City of God? I was one of those children getting drilled unnecessarily, we he, left, has to, he has tooth trauma. I have just tooth, like this tooth kid. trauma. Oh, I hate the yeah, dentist. I've, right. I've been drilled more times than any human should be for things that were not my fault. And okay. then, yeah, it's, and I, I've always had like a checkered relationship with the dentist since then. I don't trust him. Yeah. Don't trust any dentist. Well, no. They, 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 yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would you trust him? Yeah. They could burn in hell. Yeah, that was me. Sorry to all our dentist listeners. Not really. That was uh, me after the dentist every time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, dentist, yeah. I, I've always hated going to Who likes to go to the dentist? Come on. Yeah, I also... I, <laughs> There's some freaks out there. Yeah, it's Bill Murray in Little Shop of Horrors. Candy bar! <laughs> candy bar! I get a candy bar! Oh. Uh... The there is a point in the movie where where we see Buscape's point of view rocket rocket yeah after after Zepequino is killed by the runts much yeah. later in the yeah, movie yeah when he when he's looking in 
Yeah, and that was shot by the actor who played Buscape. Oh, really? Yeah, so they were pretty pretty loose with the production of this movie, it feels like. It wasn't like so strict and calculated like some other movies. They were just like, we're going to make this movie in this location, and what happens? It's going to be real. <laughs> we're going to use real kids that don't have any acting history. Because like, even in the beginning of the movie, when you when they're chasing that chicken around, yeah. and oh, it, get, yeah. it, it yeah. runs into the street... Yeah, and the and the cameraman is just following the chicken, and there's a car driving, and the chicken just like happens to run underneath the car. At yeah. like the, it's, it's what if that chicken? What if that was like run over? Obviously, they might have still used it in the movie. They but do another take. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just crazy that it worked out because it, it seems like it's something like that would be planned, but it's just like it's like they're just shooting B roll, and then yeah. Yeah. they're filling yeah. it. They're filling in like the lines and the actors with the rest of it. Yeah, that's it's, a great point. That's a great point. I it thought, seems I like thought a, sorry. it seems like a lot of like the whole party scene at the end, or uh, and like the halfway point. Yeah, I the guess. big big party, the yeah, one the where party Benny dies with the the going away party for that guy for uh, Benny. The, oh, for, for Benny for Lil Z's yeah. partner and his friend. Yeah, and uh, that there was a lot of coordinating right there. There's, there's a lot of people in that warehouse, it, or slum, yeah. or like, a courtyard. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It seemed like it was just like a party. They just filmed. yeah. You have to you have to imagine they were they just said hey we're just gonna throw a big I party mean, it's and Brazil. record. Yeah, yeah. Brazil. Uh, there's yeah. There's a number of interesting little trivia bits. The actor who played Rocket was talking mm-hmm. to Marina, that character of Marina, about how he never took a hot bath, and that was re- just them talking. He grew up in the slums, and he'd never taken a hot bath before. Oh yeah, yeah. Before the actual production started which is it's interesting. And then the actor that played Lil Z, he grew up from the city of God and he had no, he didn't want to be an actor. He just went to the audition to keep his friends company and was cast as the main character, which is in, it just insane. That yeah. is insane because I think all of the performances in this film were just dynamite. Yeah, it was very realistic. Uh, yeah. The, um, the beginning of the movie when they're not in the, favela i guess when yeah. they're not in the slums they're still in the city of god mm-hmm. and that guy i don't even remember what his name was but he catches his wife cheating on him with one of the it was shorty oh one yeah it was the, shorty yes bang, one, goose bang one, shorty's wife one of the older kids i think who gets killed goose and uh, but it, he kills her with a shovel and then buries her in the house under <laughs> like under their bed yeah yeah that's gnarly it, yeah, no, I just a... I I don't I don't understand the significance, like as far as like it being like a real oh this is an abusive piece of shit and he's I gonna... think it's just supposed to show you that the caliber of characters that live in this area. Oh, uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and yeah. so I yeah that broke my heart though when I saw that because she was such a sweet person and. He just <sighs> that whole bit before it flashes forward to the the present day when it's back in the in olden days. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because it shows the three of them. They all take different paths. Goose starts working with his dad. Clipper works mm-hmm. for the church, and then Shaggy goes with Bernice. And the, yeah, they frame a, a regular old person for the murders at the hotel. The cops do. Goose bangs Shorty's wife. Shorty kills his own wife and buries her in the shed. And then Shaggy and Bernice are going to leave the slums. And they said they're all wanted for the death of the motel, and even though no one knows about it. And then, yeah. And then Goose is one that finds Little Dice with all the money. He fled town and then has all this money. And then he, Little Dice, turns around and kills Goose. Yeah. So he wasn't killed by the guy who he banged his wife. He's killed by Little Dice. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when it's like in broad daylight too, when he's running running away from the guy who going to kill his wife. To be fair, to be fair though, Goose did just take all Little Dice's money for no reason. So <laughs> he's for like, no reason. He Wait, no, the, there, there was a reason. And you Why, deserve what's, death. What's the reason? What's the reason, Tyler? <laughs> because he wanted the money. <laughs> that's the, that's the reason. Like, I'm I innocent, know. Your Honor. Wanted. All I wanted was the money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had it because yeah. this person's dead now. I had a good reason. Does it make make my reason not justified? <laughs> but that's a, but that but that's the good point that's the great point about this movie is everyone just acts with impunity and it 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 doesn't matter it just doesn't matter 
Yeah. There's they just the, the people will just oh, there's a lot of money right here. I'm just gonna take it. And, and then, I'm gonna kill you. And then he's gonna get killed for it. Yeah. And then he's yeah. gonna get killed for it. I mean, it's, there's a point it's a where dog uh, eat dog world there's out there. There's a point man. where uh, Tuba is like the right hand man of uh, Lil Z near the end, and then the whole knockout Ned era. Yeah. And he he gets he kills him just because he's annoying. Right. He's yeah. like, oh, hold on a second. I think Lucas has something to say. What do you have to say about it? <laughs> this is dynamite stuff. I have yeah, a lot of editing already to do on this episode, Tyler. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Go Lil, ahead. T- Tuba is just being annoying to Lil Z and then gets killed for it. He doesn't warn him or anything. He's just like in his face and he turns around and just shoots him. He's like, damn, you're fucking annoying. And then moves yeah. on with his life. It's yeah. Rough. And yeah. then the, the whole shootout at the end and the very dramatic gunfight <laughs> between the two, which is crazy, which is like where the movie starts. And then it goes all the way around. We see all the history of everybody. And then we end up at this point. And uh, yeah, it gets, it's crazy. That whole sequence. And yeah. then when we see that Lil Z has been like in cahoots with the cops this whole time. Mm-hmm. And then they, wait, it, no, it was the runs. So like the, he, they delivers a package to them, uh, money, I assume. Yeah. The cops leave and then the runs just run in and just gun them down. Very, yeah. po- very poetic uh, death. Yeah, or, it's very cyclical head. as far as the story goes. Writing, I, great writing, great screenplay. I, I I was a little bit lukewarm on that, but I think the thing about this movie though is that what we're seeing is from a photojournalist sort of perspective, rather than just a clear cut narrative. And that's what I don't know if I agree with that. I think that you're hearing it from Rocket's perspective the entire time. And then it just he just ends up being able to provide photos for the newspaper near the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it from Rocket's perspective, I was thinking it's not like he's taking pictures through it for us. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I think it's just he has a photojournalistic point of view for his environment and mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing. And that is what I took away from it. Mm. And so it's, 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 he, I know he wasn't like taking pictures of everything. Like I knew he took pictures of stuff like in his uh, later life and no, his I get uh, it. career. I get, I get it. But as far as the perspective for myself, it looked to me that he was taking pictures with his with his eyes. <laughs> okay. Why is that? Why is that a laughter? It's why, just why? the idea of that. You, the and the way you said it. He's taking pictures with his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some sort of photographic memory. Are you like some sort of photo journalist or something? Rocket. If that is your real name. I already said my name's not Rocket. It's Jose. Aren't we all technically taking pictures with our eyes? Yeah. <laughs> 30 pictures a second. Yeah, that was a dumb thing to 30 say. pictures a well, second. Well, the, the seeing people. Uh, don't, yeah, don't forget yeah. about the, the blind yeah, folks. Yeah, no, that was a dumb thing to Sight, say. Yeah, admit that. It's not dumb. It's just the way you said it is funny. Anything <laughs> else? Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, let's put some uh, grades on this on uh, City of God. Pete. Okay, I think after a, a second watch, ruminating, ruminating on it for a little bit, it's, I'm going to go with the uh, middle of the road A. It's very solid. Not quite an A+, plus, but I think that I, you could make a, an argument for it as being an A-plus type movie. I think depending on the point of your life that you watch it in and you know what your f- state of mind is when you do watch it, you might yeah. get a little bit more, a little bit less out of it. But that's a fantastic narrative, and I think that it's really interesting that it got four Oscar nominations, first movie ever to get more than two Oscar nominations for Brazil. And I think it's well-deserved thinking about just how difficult it is to make a a traditional narrative movie with professionals and SAG and controlled sets and all these things. That's hard enough. Trying to shoot it on site in a favela with unknown actors and children, a lot of children in the production and the, just the turmoil and the danger and all that stuff to get what we got is really a miracle. So fantastic movie. I give it an A. Cool. Tyler. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with uh, Pete on this one. Definitely an A for me. I think I think what this movie captures is the is the life of poverty in a country in, in a country that I feel like a lot of people who are in a modern society just would never experience the actor like the children actors were just incredible also the adult actors as well was incredible and this movie felt like it it didn't i hate to i hate it it's it, it didn't insist on the misery and so that's what i really liked about it it was very objective as far as representing the like the horrible like perspective that people have to live through in this kind of community and i really liked it and yeah solid a for me as well cool i like that i I like that camera work you're doing joseph (laughs) thank you i i yeah i think it's an a i think it's a solid a i think for me why i probably wouldn't give it an a plus but i feel like i might be able to be convinced or uh maybe on a second watch it could go up is that it just didn't hit me in any i guess emotional level i think it's just like being exposed to a different time in a different part of the world and this whole group of people in these uh, neighborhoods and cities that i have no connection to whatsoever yeah. and uh, and it's it was really it's eye opening in a way to get an idea of what it's like on that part of the world but uh, there was no real story that i could latch onto emotionally but i can sympathize with obviously i can sympathize with rocket and everybody else who suffers through that type of environment who are having to be having to deal with living in a neighborhood where you could you're in danger a, a lot of your life yeah so um yeah, that's that's an A. A's all around, triple A. That's right. From the film class. <laughs> For sake um, of God. And now that's off the wheel. Anyone else have anything to say about it real quick? Okay, all right. No, I'm good. All right, let's move on to the wheel. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. City of God off the wheel, and Joseph, you've already given me your replacement. I've already written it on the wheel. Do you want to tell the audience what is going to be replacing City of God on the wheel? The movie that I will be replacing City of God is La Haine. The Haine. La Haine, which is French for The Haine. It's The Hate. (laughs) (laughs) La Haine is a 1995 movie starring Vincent Cassell, and that's really the only other name I know in the movie, directed by Matthew Kasovitz. And I like the poster for this movie on IMDb. It just says hate. <laughs> <laughs> hate. It's a hate. And then in small parentheses, it says Lahane. That's funny. It's going to be a hate watch. <laughs> One sentence synopsis has an 8.1 on IMDb. 24 hours in the lives... 24 hours in the lives of three young men in the French suburbs the day after a violent riot. So it's almost like another city of God, but in France. <laughs> oh. Is it is it in a prison? I don't know why, for some I, reason, I thought it was in a prison. It just says French, maybe just because it looks like he is in prison because mm-hmm. he has this buzz cut and this kind of thug personality. I don't know. Over eight uh, on IMDb. They're, you in got, a, they're in a suburban ghetto. You got some. You got some bangers on the board on the wheel, Joseph. I guess so. Yeah, this was this is on my watch list, and I let the letterboxed watch list picker pick the movie for me. Cool. Uh, this is what's. This is what came up. All right. So this is this is what we're gonna do. All this right. We're gonna watch. Uh, so I'm gonna recap the wheel for new listeners and new viewers. We have the uh, spinning wheel of destiny right here. Eight slots. Two for each of us and two for the Patreon. Five dollars and up gets you on the Patreon wheel for all cool ass yard duties and above. Actually, it's a uh, class clowns and above. I'm sorry. I'm gonna recap. We got Lahane from Joseph, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves from Patreon Linda, Blackberry from Patreon Javier, Hard Ticket to Hawaii from Pete, The Abominable Doctor Fives from Pete. 
Mr. and Mrs. Smith from 2005 from Tyler, American History X from Tyler, and Eraserhead from Joseph. All right. We are going to spin this, and let's see what's on the wheel for next week. May please have a movie. <laughs> it's Eraserhead. Oh, it's Eraserhead. Wait, this wouldn't be the third movie, right? Uh, last week was Rocket Man, so no. Ah, okay. So you cannot... Eraserhead. And yeah, unofficial official rule on the show... We have a two-term limit for a review, so Joseph got two in a row. So next week, it cannot be a Joseph pick, but this coming week, it will be Eraserhead from David Lynch. Eraserhead, directed by David Lynch. Early David Lynch. I don't know if this is his first feature. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yeah. Like 1977. 1977. This is notoriously a weird movie, as David Lynch is notoriously a weird person. God damn. Why can't I get a movie? (laughs) Calm down over there. (laughs) <laughs> Henry Spencer tries to, to survive his industrial environment, his angry girlfriend, and the unbearable screams of his newly born child. Thing. It's not even. A, I don't even call it a. It's not even a child. It's a thing. Is it like a, like? <laughs> qua- it's a thing. It's a, uh, is it like Quato? Quato. There's nothing like it. It's Quato. There's yeah. Oh, it's Quato. It's Quato. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was Quato. There's nothing like it. You just have to see the. Baby. <laughs> Nothing like it. It's streaming on Max and the Criterion channel. Perfect. Oh boy, can't wait. I saw this one time. I don't think I've ever finished it. I thought I, I thought it was too weird back then. All right. Well, I saw I saw it once. Yeah, it's it's David Lynch. I think, think this is Lynch movie. I think this is one that when we record next week, we need to we need to do give our reviews in but first. Give our grades in our first. Our grades? Yeah, we'll do one of those again. Our oh. grades first. Okay. <clears throat> oh, anything else you want to say about that, Joseph? No, I've I com- haven't seen it before. <laughs> That's oh, okay, cool. Cool. You haven't? Oh my god! I completely forgot. We just hit. This is our four hundredth episode. Oh uh, yeah, this episode this or episode. this episode right now? We just finished. Oh, okay, four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah. So, yeah. What a milestone! I know. Yeah, we're we're still doing it. <laughs> still here. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> Much to some people's chagrin. It's very sunny outside and warm. I know. Yes, you mentioned that last episode. Hey, people yeah. like uh, people like hearing our noise. Come on, yeah. come on, Joseph. Maybe uh, a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> Send us the hate. Yeah, we want we want some hate mail, please. Bring us the hate. Yeah. Tell well, us what you don't like about Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> or the sugar. You can bring us some sugar or some vinegar, either way. Um, or tell me what you like about me. <laughs> yeah. But. I like, I like, like what, what don't you like about Tyler? <laughs> what is it about Tyler that you just can't stand? <laughs> All right. Anything oh, else you guys want to say? I love it, though. I love it. Anything else you fellas want to say? Nope. Uh, no, I think that's it for me. Okay, great. So thank you to our cool ass yard duties on Patreon. It's Javier, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbin, and Chris. If you want to support us on the Patreon, hit us up, patreon.com slash middle class film class. We're gonna be doing a watch along soon with the new Neil Breen movie. Oh yeah. Cade, the tortured crossing. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. You can watch the movie and talk about it all together as a big group <laughs> as, as we watch it together for the first time. Until next time. Thank you for joining us as we review City of God from uh, Joseph. Follow us next week as we watch another one of Joseph's picks. I just forgot it. Eraserhead. <laughs> yes. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mcfcpodcast, and send us an email, mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. And follow us on Instagram at Middle Class Film Class. And also leave us a voicemail, why don't you, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at Podcast MCFC and on TikTok at Middle Class Film Class. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.